Welcome to the Be Courageous Summit. My name is Tracy Tadero. I'm a self-love mentor and life coach. And the intention of this summit is to provide encouragement and support for anybody who's experiencing negative emotions of fear and uncertainty during times of turmoil and adversity. Today, we've got a special guest, Carolyn Moore. In 2011, Carolyn achieved her dream of playing golf professionally. Only two months later, she survived an earthquake in New Zealand. Just over a month after the natural disaster, she was diagnosed with cancer of her knee, after which she had to amputate her leg to survive. Life's dreams were paused, but Caroline refused to give up the belief of living life to the fullest. Just over two months after the amputation, she made a comeback at the elite stages as a golf professional. Since then, Caroline has inspired thousands of people and companies around the world, setting meaningful goals, handling change, and becoming strong mentally. She holds an NLP master degree and has been nominated top 10 best speaker in Sweden in 2018. Since 2017, she sponsors her own school within the Star for Life program in South Africa. Caroline has been interviewed in Fox News, The Times, Sky Sport, ESPN, and Forbes. We'd like to welcome you today, Caroline Moore. Welcome! Thank you so much, Tracy. I'm so happy to be part of this interview series. It's amazing to be in this summit, I think, because it's such a great initiative and really what people need need right now. So yes, thank you. I know, and it's just it's it's fascinating to see that this has come to life, and it's just it's going to be powerful. So I'm so glad that you are here, and I'm so happy that all of our audience and viewers is, are here, and we're just gonna it's gonna be a great interview. I know it. I know it. So um, let's start out. Um, tell me about a time in your life where you had to build resiliency in a time of adversity? I mean, you've, you've got some things you've been through, but what's a time that really stands out and how you did that? I mean, obviously, as you mentioned in the really, really nice presentation, uh, I was faced with a cancer diagnosed by the age of 22, and I had just started to pursue basically my dream. I became a golf professional one month before the diagnosis. And then suddenly my life just changed from one second to the other. And this was a moment in my life when I really realized, you know, life choices that I made, what I prioritized, how I built my mental muscle to come back from from difficulties. Because I hadn't really reflected on it up until this time, but this time it became so clear to me that I needed this mental muscle to work for me in order to to come back. And I mean, this was a process. This was not something that I just realized within a day or so. It was a process of of several weeks of working really, really hard and facing all of those fears that came up, facing the worry, uh, facing everything that I was basically standing in front of because my life was going to just shift within just a couple of weeks, going from two leg to one leg. So I would say that this is the moment, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, And so here you went through this just immense challenge in your life where it wasn't something that, you know, you could resume life as normal. I mean, you had to make a lot of adjustments with this, you know, process that you went through. So how did you turn that challenge or those challenges into opportunities in your life? I would say that it consisted of three keys for me to turn it around really. And basically that was the keys for me to build resilience and make something else out of it. Because the first thing that I was faced with was this this cancer diagnosis, you have to amputate your leg and everything is going to be different. And when I heard these words, I had a prefixed idea about how it is to get cancer, how it is to get sick, how it is to become one-legged. I mean, I haven't seen so many one-legged people in my life up until this point, but I had my prefixed ideas about it. And it became so obvious in this moment that I have really a choice on what I decide to believe in. And it maybe sounds easy, but it became really, really clear in this moment because there was a gap 
basically in my life there and then. It was a gap and I realized that within this gap where everything is maybe falling apart or really stormy or the ground is really shaking beneath our feet, that's a gap, but the gap is also an opportunity to choose different because then we don't need to go with those prefixed ideas about what everybody is telling us that this is what you should believe and this is how things happen and this is how things are going to be. So first of all, I stopped for a moment. So that was basically the first key. I stopped and I took three deep breaths. And as I did this, it was like I grounded myself to what do I want? How do I view this? Uh, what is my passion? What do I want to do? So I allow that kind of space to come into my life in this way. And as I stopped, there was also this chance to ask myself the golden question. I call this the golden question <laughs> because what if life is really happening for you and not to you? What's the gift? And I can tell you that in this moment, it was incredibly hard to answer that question because I simply didn't have an answer. But I allowed myself to be curious enough to find out the answer. And I said to myself, who said actually that being on one leg is going to be a bad life? Who said that I couldn't do the things that I love having one leg? Like who says that? Maybe there is a time right now where I could just rewrite the book of the rules of how to live my life. But from my standpoint, because I took a break, I paused and I started to ask myself these questions and especially the golden question. And that is like coming into a reflective part, which is the, the second key is becoming aware about not only what you think, but how you think mm. and how you choose to apply those things into your life. And the third key was simply to take actions, to take actions and try. So as you say, I had to make a lot of adjustments. I didn't know how anything worked. There was no handbook. And basically my family and my friends, they didn't have a handbook either. But we said that, come on, let's be in this together and see what kind of solutions we will find. And it took me several years just to have the courage enough to to go biking again, for example, because I didn't know how that worked as a one leg. So it was a it was a really crazy process, but it taught me so much about resiliency. That is an incredible and inspirational story. I just like so have such respect for you and what you've gone through, and and just how you took that situation and just shifted into acceptance and taking action in the, the only way that you could, right? The new way. And I think for everybody now who's experiencing this pandemic and, and going through changes in their life, it's, it's about doing that too, right? Taking a new action. And I know a lot of people feel like they've, they've experienced a big loss in their life, you know, in one way or other. And so those three steps are really powerful in being able to help people look at things in a different way and your your golden question i love that that's just a great little um a great way that you you stated that thank you yeah i love to bring this um this thought to an idea to other people that they can really take inspiration and help themselves in their life because as you say we're all going through these obstacles but how we deal with them we don't have to be alone dealing with them and as I do with my work on stage as a speaker or in my context in my workshops, that we help each other develop towards where we want to go. It's not a one woman or one man show. I don't believe in that at all, actually. No, and you've had to develop a strong mental muscle through all of this. And we're all going through the same thing. And so what... Um, what did that look like to you? What was the process you, that you went through that our viewers can benefit in the situation that they're in now in building that strong mental muscle? Okay, so I would uh, share some of the things that I did to build this mental muscle. And that was really reframing my thoughts. So for example, um, having one leg, 
is a bad life. That was a truth that I was carrying or having one leg, you cannot be beautiful again. And maybe some of the viewers that are watching this uh, acknowledge that what kind of limiting thought are you hanging on to right now? What belief are you hanging on to that is actually blocking you from, from doing the things that you want and finding solutions for, for things that you really need in your life, right? Yeah. Uh, because fear is really blocking us in this way. And fear has one way, like it has one job according to me, and that is basically keeping us safe mm -hmm. and I would really like to say that fear has has its place but we need to be aware about where that place is and regulate the fear meaning that we cannot let it take over to choose from love instead or choose from a place of gratitude or choose from a place of openness and see okay I have this fear right now I'm really scared about these things in the future because I'm building up something that is really terrifying in the future. Whether it's um, getting a new job or maybe there is about something financially or something else in your life that you're just building up a picture which is full of fear. So you're actually going to act out of fear right now in the presence. So we need to be able to separate that. So that is what I really did in the beginning. I acknowledged that I had a lot of fear for what was coming, but I forgot to, as I said, I'm coming back to this key, number one key again, to stop for a moment, take three deep breaths and just look around. Where am I right now? Where are you right now? Are you safe? Are you okay? How's the ground feeling beneath your feet? And just coming back to this, this is very basic, but coming back to this makes you realize that the future picture of fear is actually something that is making you take decisions in a way that doesn't really resonate to where you are right now. You get what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so this is really what I, what I realized during this process. So um, I came back to here and now, and I had three weeks to prepare myself for the amputation. So three weeks doesn't seem like a lot of time, oh. but for me, yeah, but for me, I, um, I calculated the hours. So I calculated and I thought, how many hours does three weeks actually consist of? Because if I am here right now, I can take decisions and actions that are powerful that bring me in the direction that I want to go, a direction of love, gratitude, joy, and not out of fear. So I calculated the hours and I found out that it has 504 hours. And immediately, <laughs> so it feels like a lot of time, right? Like much more time than three weeks. And based out of this, I had another ground to stand on because I brought the presence and my focus back to now instead of living in the, in the future where there was just fear. It's okay to build up a future and visualize and dream. I'm all about that. But it should be with the intention that is empowering you and comes from a place that is powerful and joyful and gives you like these positive emotions back. So that's really the, the advice I would give. Maybe it's a bit unclear at this moment, but the advice I would give to the viewers is really bring back your attention to now. If you feel that everything is rocky and just see where you have, just like acknowledge like all those basic things and build from this point and realize that fear is there, there but it has a place and you let it be kind of like if you are familiar to meditation. You get a thought, but you let it pass. And that's the same thing with fear. So fear for me, you either can archive it, meaning that you let it pass, or you can activate it, meaning that you are living it, that you are taking actions out of fear. You're owning it, right? Owning it, right? You're incorporating it into your world instead of letting it go. Exactly. Yeah. So I know when you, you know, after your amputation and you're having to try these new things and, and live life in such a different way. Um, can you talk about a moment? And I'm sure you probably had many where the thought of just like 
I can't do this. I can't do this. Cause I know a lot of our viewers are being pushed to try new things in their life and go new directions and step into discomfort. And so when the, when those moments crept up for you, if they did, you know, yeah. what, how did you get through that? Um, I built a, a team of people around me that helped me. Mm. Uh, I was really clear about that I couldn't do this alone. And I knew that these moments would come because it's natural. We all have them at more or less uh, intensity, more or less times in life. You have those moments. So I knew that they would come. And as I had these thoughts, my, my strategy was talking to the people that I was trusting. So at the moment when I received the cancer diagnosis or fell into this hole, I told the people around me that I trust you to be in my team. Uh, like I called it my team. And um, I, you are so important and meaningful to me. Can you be there for me as much as I am there for you? Because a change or something that we're going through doesn't only happen to you. Mm. And this is the thing which I think a lot of us forget. We think that we are totally alone in the world going through these obstacles or thinking, I cannot do this. This is impossible. It's never going to work. I don't have these skills. I'm too old. I'm too young. All of those stories are like constantly repeating themselves sometimes, but we are not alone having them. So having this one key person or a couple of key people that you can just call or talk to that can help you into the right direction again. That was my strategy. And sometimes it was just about being with the thought, I can't do this, and slowly starting to reframe it, let's try. Let's try to do it. And I don't know how this works yet, because I don't, but, I'm going to try and I'm going to give it a chance. That was my way to do it, actually. Wow, that's, that's powerful. And I think, like, for myself, I know when I've gone through times that have been challenging, you know, like 2008, right, when the stock market crashed and everything came crumbling down. And it was that fear of like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen to my house? What's going to happen to my kids? And I actually walked through a fear process of like, okay, so I lose the house. Okay, well, I can move in with friends. Okay, we can get, you know, another job. Like, I mean, and I took it all the way down to, okay, I have to live in my car with my kids, but you know what? We're together and we'll be okay. And then it was like, I knew that wasn't realistic because I knew it would never get to that point, but just allowing myself to walk all the way deep down into that fear and bring it to light of like, worst case scenario, what's going to happen? we're not going to die. We're going to be okay. And something there's enough people around or, you know, resources of people that would are willing to help. And I love that you have this team of people that were there to help you. And I think it's important for viewers to understand there are people around that care. There are people. And even if you're feeling alone at this moment, there are people, there are, you know, groups and, you know, you can join my Inspired Wisdom Coaching Facebook group if you, you know, want support. And just, I think when people get vulnerable and honest about what they're feeling, like, is anybody else afraid right now? Or is anybody else worried about this? Yeah. It gives people, other people permission to stand up and, you know, bond together and be strength for each other. I mean, that's the theme of the show is being courageous. And it's like, if you can't be courageous alone, ask, reach out for help. And there's always somebody who wants to be there and support. People love to help, right? Like your yeah. team is just like, we're here for you. Let's see. What do you need? What do you need? We're going to help you get through this. And it's so rewarding for other people. Like I think a lot of people think, oh, I don't want to trouble ever, anybody, but people love to help. And they do. They really love to help. I can so resonate to that because that is something that a lot of people are asking me Two, today, for example, if I walk on crutches with one leg, they ask, oh, but how is it really to ask for help? Isn't that kind of not feeling enough or valuable enough? But we can see it in this way. As you say, people love to help. People love to feel needed. Mm -hmm. There is 
nothing like more powerful than making another person feel needed actually. So joining these networks, the groups of yours, the Inspired Wisdom, it's just like building this together and that is so powerful. I love that. It is. And you know, I want to say to the viewers, asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It is a sign of strength. And I think a lot of people, and especially men, don't feel that way. They think that that's being weak. And it's just, it's such a beautiful characteristic for somebody to be vulnerable. And obviously, you know, we need to be careful who, or who we are vulnerable with because, you know, if somebody's going to get shamed or, you know, look at it, you know, oh, you're a man, you can't be weak. Like, I understand that. But for the most part, that vulnerability is just so powerful and it's such a strong quality. Yeah, definitely. Um, so let's see here. We kind of talked about, you know, I guess what final words of encouragement and support do you have for the viewers in regards to being courageous? Like just give it to them straight of like, you know, what you think people need to hear right now in realizing that they can be courageous during this time. Yeah. I believe that courage, courage comes from both thankfulness and to be kind to yourself. So encouragement is, uh, doesn't have to be only these like great, um like the greatest ad adventures of of climbing mount everest it can be those actions in daily life where you just show up that can be courage it can be courage to be there for somebody it can be courage to send a text to somebody to ask them for uh how they are feeling like there is a lot of different things and don't forget those small things that can really empower you through these moments and to be courageful is also to set up small goals for yourself every single day. So that is something that I work with every single day to set an intention. What is my intention for today? And how can I be like loving and nice to myself and others today and tomorrow and the next day after that? So that's what I would say. To do those small actions and to set an intention for today, that's to be courageful. Well, and I think even getting up in the morning, taking a shower and getting dressed for the day is a step of courage, right? I think some people are just like, I don't want to do anything. I don't have a job to go to. Why? And it's just doing those little things that you're going to feel a little bit better, right? Yes, exactly. Taking care of yourself and yeah, taking and this to, really, to really be with like yourself and everything that you normally don't have time for, that is also great to spend time with doing right now. So I have a question for you because I did get some feedback from several women who were just, you know, really having a difficult time because the hair salons are closed, the nail salons are closed, and it's causing them to feel even more insecure mm -hmm. and not being able to have, you know, the hair done or have the grays covered or the roots done or the nice manicure. And so do you have some advice of, being able to embrace yourself with what you have or what you are able to do um, rather than going out and, and having these services done that, that created an external, and I know it helps, you know, we all want to feel attractive and beautiful and put together, but with times as they are, you know, even the men, the men are growing their hair out, the beards yeah. are coming out. And it's just, you know, there's a lot of, I don't know if I want to call it sacrificing, but um, having to face things that people have not normally faced. And so do you have any, you know, words of wisdom or, you know, in regards to the people that are really being affected by not being able to do those sort of, you know, beauty routines or regimens? Yeah, I would say maybe you can rock it in another different, like unique way right now. Like see what, <laughs> because that is really the thing. Maybe there is something new coming up right now. It's a new style, it's a new look. See it as something that, this is something that is just in my closet right now. And I'm just gonna embrace it as it is. And in a couple of weeks, then I am able to change it. If I want to, maybe I wanna stay in this, but exploring that a little bit 
that I would really go for. Because that is something that for me, I never shame showing that I got one leg, for example. But a lot of people ask me if I, why I am not. But I'm just saying that this is a way to show up like a uniqueness and something beautiful in a different way. So maybe they can do it the same with their, with their hair or what they're like feeling that they're not so comfortable with right now. Maybe they can rock it in a way. I love that. Rock it, everybody out there. Just rock it. Seriously, that's, it's so well said. Because We're all in the same boat anyway. So. That is an empowering term. Rock it. Like, how can you rock? Like, you've got my daughter's friend. She just graduated from college. And her friend who was, you know, platinum blonde is just like, oh, my gosh, I am now a brunette. Like, yeah. she looks beautiful. And she had to embrace that because, you know, it's not like getting a box of hair color. It's like getting, you know, it's a little bit more intense getting the, the bleaching done. But yeah she's rocking it and it's just she's getting used to this new look because she hasn't had her hair that dark for you know eight years or whatever and um i think it's cute it's just trying new things trying new looks try and paint your own nails right try and you know go to the hair go to target and get a box of hair color and try something a little different than you normally would have done it's like it's it's all gonna grow out right yeah <laughs> Everything is going to grow out. <laughs> yeah, people are probably sitting watching going, oh, you know what, Caroline, you're beautiful and perfect. You don't have to worry about any of this. What do you, what do you know? But we're all experiencing it, right? I mean, we're having to make do with what I'm sure you usually get your hair done or whatever. And Yeah, and now I cannot. And you're making do. And it's just, I mean, I am too. We, we do what we can, but... <laughs> Do what it can. All rock it right now. I mean, I think everything's starting to open up again where people can go back and do that, but yeah, why not try something different? Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. Well, thank you for that. And I want to just kind of roll into um, an amazing free gift that Caroline is offering for the viewers of this um, series. And so I will let you share with the audience what your free gift is. Yes, so it's a workbook on how to become a mental champion that I share. And if you go to my website, you will be able to get it there, signing up for the form. Perfect. Well, and you, what a story of yours, you know, being a mental champion. Like you have done the work, you have lived it. So, I mean, it's such a valuable gift that you're providing for everybody to, to you know, learn the information that you personally have gone through and it's worked for you. I mean, you're, you're a standing testimony of, of the journey that you've been on and, and that you've come out the other side. So thank you for that. And then also um, you have a paid offer available on your website as well. Yes, I do. So I created an online course in mental strength. So you can unleash this potential and become mentally stronger, really build on this resiliency. And that is also on my website. It's $199 for the whole course. It's lifetime access, over 40 workbooks, and a lot of videos and audio files in this course. Yeah. That's it's really like an amazing course. I hope that we see you there. And both of those are available on your website. And what's the, um, your web address? Yes. Um, Caroline Moore dot eu so it's caroline c in the beginning e in the end more with m o h r dot eu okay and we will also have a link at the bottom of the page that everybody received the email from so you can uh sign up for that free gift and then you can also um, access her paid offer as well as learn more about caroline on her website and thank you for being such an inspiration thank you for sharing your story and your words of wisdom and your experience with everybody out there. And I know it's just such a gift for everybody to get to see somebody um, go through such adversity and come out so strong and just kicking life in the butt, I guess is the best way. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Kicking life in the butt. That's what we all need to do. <laughs> it's time, right? It's time. Yeah, and keep doing that over and over again because it's a lifelong journey to, to, to build resiliency and mental strength. I'm still learning. But thank you so much, Tracy, for having me. Thank you. Fun. Thank you so much, Caroline. And to, the, to everybody out there, I just want to say, in the meantime, be courageous.
signing off with love and light.